This is the bullet train. It's a Japanese 300 mile an hour train that's been in use since 1964. It can reach those speeds because every single carriage has two very powerful electric motors. This is the Westminster motor kit. It's got everything you need to make a motor. It's got a magnetic field. This is just two magnets separated by a short distance. And they're set to attracting one another. And it's got a block, which is a piece of plastic, with a wire wrapped around it. And the two ends of the wire are exposed at this side of the block. And that rotates freely around an axle and is just stood on a base. One more thing we need in the motor effect, the magnetic field, coil of wire with a current flowing through it. So this red wire is the positive wire, this black wire is the negative wire. So when I turn my power pack on, I'm just going to touch the, these two wires against my bare connectors. Hopefully, yep, do you see that move? Hopefully it's going to start the motor turning. Every time the motor spins just one half turn, then the connections, they touch the other plug that I'm holding. So the current continuously reverses every half turn around the wire in the middle. And that means that the motor can keep spinning in the same direction, in this case as I look at it, clockwise. Well now, let me reverse that current by just changing the wires around from my power pack. You see now the motor spinning in the anti-clockwise direction. Fleming's left hand rule helps us remember the directions in which the three quantities to do with the motor effect are organised. Now you just need to remember what is on each finger. So the first finger, that is the magnetic field. So whichever direction that magnetic field might be. The second finger, that's the direction of the current in the wire. And the thumb is the direction of the force. So in this case, I know which direction the current is, positive negative, so I know which direction it's going around the wire. This side is positive, around here to negative, here. And I know, I can see when I touch it, which direction the force is going to be. Okay, on this side it's upwards, on this side it's downwards. So now I can use my left hand rule to actually work out what direction the unknown, the magnetic field is. So, this was positive, this was negative. So in this side, just this side for now, the current is in this direction towards the camera. And the field, we don't know that yet, but we do know that the force was upwards initially. So the thumb, the minute is pointing upwards, therefore the field is from north to south, north to south. Now if I turn that around, if I change the two wires around, and I use the black wire on this side and the red wire on this side. You can see now the direction in that, on that side is downwards. So that's because I had my Fleming's left hand rule like that. Now the second finger, the current finger, is pointing in this direction. So therefore everything switches except the field. The force is now downwards. Similarly, if I just move the magnetic field around, so now the right hand side is north, the left hand side is south, you will see firstly we're back over to the direction of movement we had before, with the right hand side being up, And then if we change them back to the very first way it was, now the left hand side goes up first. So what happened there, so we had our, it set up like this, and we actually changed the direction of the field 
So therefore, the direction of the force changed. If you don't have Westminster motors at school, then you can still actually make yourself a motor. These are some of the things that you might use. These are just ordinary magnets. They're quite strong bar magnets, but you can just use the ones off a fridge, which still give you a magnetic field. You just need a cell of some type to give you a current. So these two ordinary household batteries, 9 volt battery or 1.5 volt cell. This is just ordinary insulated wire. It's very easy to come by. These paper clips are useful for standing things up and for making electrical connections. Simple copper wire of any kind of grade is fine. This is just a key. It's useful as the block of a magnet. And these things are called niobium oops, super magnets. They're very quite strong magnets. And actually, I can't really even separate them just with one hand. They're very strong indeed. I'd like to challenge you to make a motor that will spin on its own for 30 seconds. And if you can do that, well, post me a video uh, to let me know how you did. Okay, cheers. Thanks a lot for listening.